What's up, THL? Welcome to a very special pre-Hearth Center match. We have a hero finals match for you tonight. Excited to be here. I'm Donde, and I'm joined by Brushy Tuna over that way. Brushy, what's going on, man? Nothing too much, man. You know, excited to be here. Excited to be here for these hero uh, finals match. You know, it is Halloween week. So I brought the costume back. Uh, so shout out to everyone in chat that enjoyed that last time, which I assume was uh, zero people. But <laughs> you do it for yourself. You do it for, for, exactly. for the only person that matters right here. It's right here in my heart. That doesn't <laughs> exist. But anyways, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to kick off these uh, this Hero Series final, man. I mean, two great teams. One of these teams was like the uh, was the number one rated team in preseason. So um you know, it's good to see them get all the way here like everyone expected them to. And the challenge centers, I think, was like fourth or fifth on most people's on our list at the beginning of the season for Hero. So it's also good to see them just come in and just absolutely crush it as well. Right. So this is this is two great, just two great matchups, you know. Yeah, obviously you've done something right if your team makes the finals. You know, seven yeah, and two right. challenge centers, six and three wild aces. They were obviously strong, strong teams, both out of the purple conference. And uh, not not to say not to say that Teal didn't have their own good teams, but they did not have a final team this season. So purple represent. Uh, as we mentioned, we are going to be looking at the four seed matchup tonight, which is Inzi of the Challenge Stoners versus Nine Eyebrows of Wild Aces. So you can see the classes down below, and you can also see all the, already they've you know sent the bands in. They're just ready to roll right now. So we're going to see from tonight for Inzi Paladin Priest, Rogue, and Warrior with a Paladin band. And then nine mm -hmm. eyebrows, we'll see demon hunter, druid, hunter, and warrior, and that hunter will be banned. So not surprising Whoa. classes that have been uh, banned quite a bit. I guess the the one thing I would say for nine eyebrows aside, uh, you know, demon hunter and warrior have been stalwarts in a lot of people's lineups, and neither of those yeah. got banned. So if you're in Z, or you think, are, are you, are, I mean, you know, it's hero. You don't have to win every single matchup. You have to have a counter here, a counter there, and that can get you through. Um, is there is there kind of method to the madness in your eyes, brushy? With uh, Inzi's yeah. band pick, uh, yeah, I think so. I think you know you can almost guess that your opponent's going to either have Warrior or Demon Hunter or both. 
So he and he probably had a plan coming into the week about like what he's gonna do against both Demon Hunter and Warrior. And he's probably he's like, you know what, I feel good uh with all my decks against those two. So let's just ban something else that uh maybe I don't feel as well into. Um and obviously sometimes Hunter can just three oh sweep by killing you know, like turn six or turn seven just from that pure aggression. So I, I do I do like the bans here or the ban here from Inzi a a lot. So Yeah, I like the uh Inzi's lineup's a little unique in regards to not having any Demon Hunter at all. Mm -hmm. uh, Hunter's not featured, which has been in a lot of lamps, and obviously Mage yeah. is gone for both of these players. Uh, not surprising that Mage is gone in all six lineups that have been revealed so far. Uh, not all the lineups are in, so uh, I don't expect that to be really anything too surprising uh, if, if no Mages show up across these uh, these uh, five matches because it did get nerfed, as we know, very recently, and uh, it's not doing so hot anymore. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. Compared to what it was. Yeah. So, it's, you know, uh, maybe it'll find its way again in the next expansion. Yeah, there might be some tweaks. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're close enough to the next expansion now that that might be the, the saving grace for it, but yeah. uh, for now, it is not featured. It will not be here tonight. We will be focusing on the classes... Uh, that we are going to see, which are Priest, Rogue, Warrior, Demon Hunter, Druid, Warrior, and uh, let's get it going here. So, excited, no matches played, 0-0 zero, zero score, this is uh, this is the tone setter. Let's do it. So, yeah. I'm going to let this... the players know. Let's get it. And Dante, you hit the nail on the head there, you know, if uh, one of these players comes out and just 3-0 sweeps their opponent, that, that feels so good in the hearts of, like, the rest of the team, so... Um, you know, you weren't you weren't kidding there. This is this is the tone setter. This is this is how your team like feels about the rest of the matchup. We're like, you know, if you come in and just crush it, then the rest of the team's like, oh, we got this. This is ours. Um, you know, but if if you lose, and you know, the team's still gonna be like, all right, let's relax, reset. But definitely getting that first win of the of the series is just pure hype. Oh, I see eyeballs. I do as well. Let's hope that my uh, friends list allow me to click on the correct eyeball. Mm, I hope not, but <laughs> much more. I guess for stream, I guess for stream's sake, I, I guess I hope it does. All right, so we got nine eyebrows yeah. leading off but on the demon hunter, and Enzi leading off on the warrior, and this no. looks to be possibly Burn big warrior death. here with these double athletic studies in the opener hand. So uh, this is favored into the demon hunter. Uh, so we'll see what nine eyebrows can do to retaliate. There we go. Everything should be visible now to the stream. As we saw, uh, as you can see on the stream, NZ is on the bottom, and Nine Eyebrows will be on the top here. And yes, it does appear to be a big warrior for NZ. Evil as you said, that athletic studies close. is usually a good indicator. Yep. There was two in his opener, which is uh, which really made me believe it was big. Because sometimes I've seen Control run like one, but uh, the double just, I think, is full on. And he's got that Cargath Ooh. Blade Fist in hand, which is not a card you typically want to pull off of Commencement. So, prefer to have that in hand right now. Interesting choices here off the Athletic Studies. Going to go with the Vile Fiend to have something to play earlier on. Mm -hmm. I thought about maybe you could take the Rustied Raider, but uh, it's just cheap. And you can combo with something else in the future turn. Meanwhile, Nine Eyebrows got that Spirit Jailer down on turn one. Turn two, not typically a power turn for this Soul Demon Hunter list. Unless you have a Wand Maker, you're probably just going to tap the Hero Power. Uh, unless you have a second Spirit Jailer to play as well. Ooh, okay. Thought they might be a Corsair Cash there, but opts yeah. to just get the uh, the Dormant Minion online. Get it, get it active as soon as possible. I don't think that's necessarily a bad play. With no weapons in hand, you know Corsair Cash is probably going to be good. Assuming you have at least two weapons in deck. As you only need to run one, you know. However you want to do it. Well, I mean, you've seen uh, Ank oh, not Ankar, obviously not on this list, but like the uh, the scythes are a common inclusion. Sometimes you see live wire lances, the bulwark. So there are options yeah. that could be in this deck for uh, for a Corsair cash draw. <laughs> Greetings. will delay the Corsair cash another turn to get that blade fist online. Commencement big draw. Definitely a card you want to see going into the later parts of the game here as Big Warrior. Yeah, and Enzi still has the coin from his opener, so his uh, possible turn six commencement. Uh, 
Demons? Demons. Considering here what Night Eyebrows wants to do. Marrow Slicer seems like a possibility. Warblades, if he'd rather not use the Marrow Slicer now to clear off the Kargath instead. Hmm. Obviously get the Marrow Slicer activated. And he will use it to clear Kargath like this. Yeah. I like that play only because this Vile... Oh my goodness, another commencement pickup. But I did like that play just because this Vile Fiend was waking up and you can't... Uh, um, you can't let him have both minions in board control. Correct. So. And we do see the Bulwark is the draw off of the Corsair Cache. Uh, not something you're going to want to play immediately. Definitely, as the game progresses, uh, can be very, very detrimental to the Soul Demon Hunter's plan. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of large swings all at once with the with the face, or uh, you know, semi semi large minions. And the Bulwark does really, really good against that style Demons. of deck. Yeah, yeah especially because there's what uh, maybe eight minions total in the entire Demon Hunter deck. Yeah, so, not a lot of them are, are worthwhile for attacking, like Spirit Jailer, yeah. Wand Maker, you know, things that, yeah, they'll do some damage over time, but they're not going to do a lot in one one go. Yeah. Right. 25, equip another weapon. Full work coming down right now. Inzi just decides to rip it at this point. Yeah, might as well. I mean, you just... You're getting a big taunt next turn, um, so might as well throw it down now. Uh, save your mana, it's uh, so you don't have to worry about it in the future. And you should, over these next two commencements, should be able to close this game out pretty quick. Absolutely, and and as we we didn't quite mention this at the top for anyone tuning in who is not familiar with Hero uh, series, Hero series is closed decklist, Demons. so we're not 100 percent sure exactly what minions could be pulled from it, but we we you know we have a good idea based on the standard decklists uh, for a big warrior. So I would expect to see something like a Rattle Gore, Troublemakers, uh, obviously Kargath Prime's already cycling in the deck, maybe even a Grom or a Deathwing in there too. Yeah. And this will oh, normally not a Grump, but uh, Grump's in some of the lists. What? That is really going to mess with Inzi's game plan here, as he's now uh, two mana short, uh, even with the uh, coin there of getting a commencement online this turn. But Blade Storm works nicely into that board. It's like just a pen flinger skull. Yep. Absolutely. Three soul fragments in deck at the moment, and uh, Nine Eyebrows did not feel like a militia for three was enough. Doesn't draw a soul fragment. Extra key there to not eat the discount from the Skull of Gul'dan. Yeah. I kind of almost like uh, playing the militia there anyways, because we are getting into the commencement turn, so this helps set up for uh, counteracting that hmm. immediately with that already on the board, but I can also see using it as a... Um, a as an answer. Tool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it, it depends on what you think um, you know might pop out of that commencement. Obviously, at this point, Nine Eyebrows is pretty confident that this deck is a big warrior deck and knows that yeah. the commencement is going to pop something big. And that yeah. is, Ooh. yeah, <laughs> that's that's a good one. That's a real good one to draw for Inzi. Yeah. Fortunately, there's no minions to gain your ten armor immediately, but. It's still a 10-10. Divine Shield Taunt. <laughs> Alicia, even enough? Even with Hero Power? No. I grow even No, I don't have to use so. a Twin Slice, so all three go in. Have to use a Twin Slice to clear it off. So you'll gain four, go down to uh, 16. I guess you use the Chaos Strike, too, because it's free. But yeah, could, could Chaos Strike to see? I mean, maybe... Well, I guess you Pen Flinger to start, too. That's fine. Maybe... I don't know if this is a list that runs Consume Magic. Because if it does, that would be pretty decent right here. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I mean, the Militia is just all three go in, or two go in, and your face goes in, so... Does 
Sky, the armor game. But uh, Inzi's going to get another roll at it right here and see what he pops out of that second commencement. Troublemaker, come on. Ooh, oh, that one's pretty good too. Yep. <laughs> Already has taunt. Add Divine Shield. I like this. Good use of your mana. Clear up the 5 5. And is he a little lower on options in hand right now? Brawl's not ideal. Chorus is fine. Uh, shield block will help him draw a few more things uh, over this uh, this turn here. Uh, the, the draw he'll be looking at, plus the shield block, of course. But uh, he's getting to the point where he can just start hard playing these large cards if he top decks them. So something like uh, you know Ralgor right mm -hmm. off the top here would be totally fine, I'm sure, for him. Uh, Dimensional Ripper in two turns will be a huge, huge pickup if Inzi can can score one of those. Um, Nine Eyebrow is going to have a real tough time getting through this minion with uh, with no consume magic to be found. Yeah. I, I well, I, I assume patience. there is no consume magic in this list after seeing this second pen flinger. Yes, I would agree with that. There still could be a chance that maybe, maybe Nine Eyebrow still found a way to fit it in, but... On average, the double Penflinger lists do not have consumed magics. So, ooh, Kane, Kane gets through it though. Kane gets through it. Go down to eleven. But it's also taken off the board. So we've seen now two big minions and two answers. Yeah, I mean, but Itzy's all right. I mean, he's sitting at twenty-one. And still has 31. four durability. Oh, yeah, 31 now. Yeah. And, yeah, 31, 33, 33 now, <laughs> and effectively four yeah, four charges on that bulwark. So uh, Nine Eyebrows is going to have to start dealing with that. But Inzi did come up kind of dry there on that draw. Bladestorm, not too helpful in this situation. Live Wire Lance, uh, also hey, completely not helpful because you definitely don't want to overwrite that bulwark at this point. Hey, but these Pen Flingers are going to yeah. do quick, quick work yep. of the bulwark. Because you can just play both pen flingers again if you want to play the second slice and just clear it up. A little note for nine eyebrows right now is he has no um, no soul fragments currently in deck. Oh, there is a consume magic, so they are running double pen consume. Okay. A little too too late for that one, unfortunately. Yeah, but I mean, maybe. Maybe it can be useful, but with the cane in hand, probably won't be that helpful. Get another live wire lance. Yep. Titanic lackey. Not what you want to see. Uh, nine can gain a ton of life here. Um, I grow if he wants the lapidary this turn, he can shoot his own three two with the soul shear. But I don't think that's that's worth it at this point. Probably just keep doing some pen flinger shenanigans, yeah, reminding guess, people that yeah. they're losers. <laughs> that's that's why the cards in the deck is to uh, to yeah. definitely leverage that here. And uh, you've seen a couple turns now that Inzi has played. Uh, fairly slow, you know, these mm -hmm. these are the turns, like you said, that you just want to be dropping huge boys if you can, yeah. and he's got nothing that he's been able to play, so if, uh, if you're not eyebrows, you got to feel like at least there's a good chance I can get moving here over the next few turns and take away a bit of this health. There goes 8 plus the 3 in the face, and as you said, heals a lot. So Nine Eyebrows feeling a little more comfortable now. There's a Troublemaker. Finally, Inzi picks up something to play. <laughs> but we're not seeing that this turn. Yeah, we're going to see a Brawl instead. Ooh, the Cobalt Lackey, if that 3-2 lives. Come on, 3-2. Uh, but we got, we got the Blade Storm, though. Blade Storm instead. And like you said, there's very minimal minions in this deck compared to a lot. So uh, yeah. you, know, you can be a little more liberal with the board clears there. It kind of feels bad to use two board clears in one go, but uh, but sometimes that's what you gotta do. 
We have four, six, eight, eleven, twelve. Okay. Current burst from nine is twelve. Uh, demons. You don't break the wand. Wand maker rolling a philosophy. Philosophy. Uh, you know what? I Boo. view that as as a pen flinger callback, essentially. <laughs> yeah. That's all. This it is really one is. mana recurring two damage to my hand. Hey, loser. And you know what? Right now, that might not be bad. At this at this point, you know, that might be all you need is just keep pulling these pen flingers back. Get Inzi into range for that cane to do work, hey, and uh, yep. just end the game. Gets rid of the taunt there, and we're gonna see those lackeys come down one more time. Or uh, not lackeys, the pen players come down one time. Nope, we're gonna see. No. Yeah. Thought, well, I thought he might do that Let's plus do the second uh, second slice. Ooh. So oh. what's left in our deck? We still have another Troublemaker. We have probably Deathwing second probably. Probably Scrapyard. Yeah, maybe one other minion. Probably Rattlegore, now. one would imagine. Yeah, Rat oh yeah, Rattlegore and maybe one more. Sometimes there's a Claws to the Moon and some other things hanging out. But. You can see hoping one of these 3-3s three three takes out the Wandmaker. It always and does. does. <laughs> He's, uh... These little ruffians know what they're doing. They gotta rough you up. Oh, the top deck. Twin slice. Is okay, so we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's just a We're little bit short that? right now. I mean, three, six, no. nine. No. We're off, We're off by three because of mana. I think 13 is the max we can do on 10 mana. Probably gonna see, yeah, probably gonna see Penflingers here set up a blade dance. Yeah. It wasn't me! It wasn't me! You can send these ones face now. I do like the route that Nine Eyebrows has taken, though, keeping that cane in hand until the last possible second here. And ideally, yeah, I mean, he'll, he'll want to make sure there's nothing on board for a Kargath to rush into. Well, the Kargath Prime's gone. Oh, commencement. The, no, that's right. Commencement pulls a uh, pulls. Yeah, it pulls the actual copy. Minion. That's right. Yes, I forgot. Yes. Dimensional Ripper right. is the one that pulls the copies. Yep. So there's no more Kargath Prime, and one of the uh, Gloss is gone as well. Blade Dance does get there, clears the board. Athletic studies can be anything. So even through taunt, we're off by one. Well played. So we still... Oh, no, no, because we have the consume. So now we can... So we have five, seven... Yeah, yeah we have lethal. Hey, loser! Hey, loser! Hide behind your surface. I will still find you. And that will be game one to nine eyebrows and the soul demon hunter Ooh. over the big warrior. So, Wild Ace is taking a one-game lead so far in this finals. We'll see how uh, NZ and the Challenge Stoners are going to respond here. So, what do we have left for NZ? We have a Rogue and a Priest. Uh, um, hmm. I'll probably bring in the Rogue. Because, like, Priest does heal a good bit, but, like, Demon Hunter's Burst are just, is so incredibly huge for the Priest. Especially since you can't uh, renew, 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 and renew again off the same renew anymore. Uh, <laughs> Th thankfully for that. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, and we do see that rogue. So, looks like it's a stealth rogue of some sort. Assume there's some questings in here as well, maybe. Uh -huh. Ooh, we got a nice turn two into turn three play here for Enzi, though. Oh, it's Weapon Rogue. Okay. 
too many of the same sar cards in all the rogues. You never know what you never know what you're seeing. <laughs> It's like we're just gonna play a Panthera without coining. Like, let's just put pressure on board. Uh, Nines probably think this is the full aggro uh, stealth. But, uh, I mean, these weapons, there's really nothing the Demon Hunter can do about these weapons, anyways. So, I'm gonna go ahead and start charging it up. Job up done. to attack on the stealth. Sorry to brief stream technical difficulty as uh, an icon decided to just yeet itself off into the, the distance and had to pull things back. So, Oh. That's why I was quiet that's for a few seconds. I figured I would get the stream was, back in order. I was trying to figure out. I kept checking my Discord because sometimes I have Discord issues. And I was like, man, am I just talking to myself? Can Donde even hear me? No, nope. I'm just going to I'm gonna just keep going just in case. I'll let, I'll let you carry it for a bit there. Yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, if, if an asset in the, uh, in the system is not locked appropriately, it just gets moved when you graze it. And uh, yep. that's what happened there, so I apologize for that. But, uh, yep, now we're back to uh, to actual accurate stream overlay. Where we see, as you mentioned, Inzi with a weapon uh, rogue here. Getting that self-sharpening sword on on curve is always good. And, you know, I, I don't see too many of these decks running Edwin. Yeah, um, I usually don't see it either in, uh, in weapon rogue. Just because a lot of, your, like, your, your cards are two to four mana on average yeah in this deck so you don't really have that explosive 14 14 edwin hmm. on turn three uh possibility as much you can still get there sometimes uh like turn three four with a couple one drops but um but that just means you weren't playing your aggressive minions out on curve and you held it for an edwin instead right and i feel like you said i feel <laughs> if, if you know if your edwin is big the deck is kind of doing something wrong in regards to the mm -hmm. curve and, and, and the game plan. So, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know if that's necessarily a, a card that I would normally include here. And Nine Eyebrows does mop it up with the Pen Flinger Soul Shear combo. Inzi does have Spectral Delinquent into Greyheart Sage next turn. Unfortunately, both Secret Passage is in hand right now. We're probably Secret Passaging this turn. Oh, maybe not. I think we could secret passage to go find the uh, the four four. No, I think you're fine to do that next turn though, because either you pick it up oh, like there you is. did right here off of the Greyheart stage, <laughs> or you secret passage next turn when your uh, weapon is bigger anyway. Yeah. So we'll get a six drop next turn off the Steel Dancer, and we get to eviscerate something if need be. Correct. Eyebrows thinking you... through here. Probably going to clear off that sage in some way. Mm. Do you want to use Kane to do it? I think he's more thinking... I think we're always using the Kane to do that. I think he's more thinking... Um, do I want to play Marrow Slicer Hero Power this turn? Or Lapidary? I think Lapidary is probably a fine choice. Because again, yes, yeah. the Rogue doesn't have too much uh, in the way of direct removal. Yep. So you're fine to go ahead and, and try to establish the board and... The second you get the rogue off their game plan and start to clear things instead of going face, you are winning the game. So we're gonna see the skill dancer come down. What will the six get? drop be? Oh, oh that's cool. huge, huge six drop. Four eight with taunt. That's all we were looking for. But of course, the cane has to be removed for it to do anything valuable. I mean, oh. Hmm. It's going to go face with the Eviscerate, trade the 3 1 into Kane, and then go face for 6 again, put him down to 10. That does maximize the damage you can do this turn. Yeah, I, I assume Inzi's got to read that there is no lifesteal weapon right now from Nine Eyebrows because he has not played it yet. And definitely would have uh, at least equipped it at some point here. So, Oh, oh there's, there's that weapon off the top. <laughs> but, no. No cards right. that, that pump it up in in the way of Twin Slice or Chaos Strike. Yeah, huh? You see that wand maker there in the middle of his hand? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. 
That's I, a twin slice. That is that is a twin slice for for some people. I grow it was a philosophy last game for nine though. Yeah, I mean, but it's it's a it's a twin slice this time, you know. Or make it, it's actually a demon companion. That's my call. This wand maker is a demon companion. You don't pick the wand. I should have stuck with my original guess. I knew it. I blame Donde. Sorry, for uh, no reason other than for you being Donde. <laughs> just, just doubting enough, apparently. Yeah. So this four four lives. So we're off by one. We need one damage. So you can. Hmm. Buy no, mistress. No, you don't. Of... Uh, weapon up. Yeah, it's still off. By oh, one. You're, oh, you're counting the weapon. Yeah, I um, count the weapon. You we can weapon. That's two, three, five. We have the secret passage to get a deadly poison. Oh, yeah, we already shadows. used one deadly poison though, so. Uh, but you got two. I like this. I like this better. So why not? You see, you just play the secret before you weapon up because you had to hook scimitar. Bye. Deadly There's poison. The deadly there it poison. is. And weapon rogue will spin this back to a one-one game. Yeah. All right. Series tied. Wound to wound. All right. What we got for nine eyebrows to deal with this rogue? We have a druid and a warrior. Um. Hmm. I think we'll probably see the druid. Uh. Especially since it's weapon rogue, like unless the warrior is tech to deal with the weapons, sometimes the just the huge burst turns, kind of like what we saw there with uh, the self sharpening sword, is just it's too great for the the warrior to keep up with and get enough um, get enough healing in time. Well, we'll see. We'll see how nine nine wants to respond with this. Obviously, we don't know the list because it is closed deckless. Um. Oh, he does go with the warrior. So, looks like possibly a control warrior. Um, with that coerce and the Lord Barov and the armor smith in hand. Um, I'm probably just keeping the armor smith if I'm nine eyebrows and pitching the rest of this. Looking for risky skipper plus other small minions to play, or just in general other minions to play here to get a huge armor turn. Most important card in the deck for Inzi, the only keep that self sharpening sword for the rogue. Yep. Ein's taking a long time to think about this mulligan here. Alright. He does just end up keeping the Armorsmith. Gets a second Armorsmith and a Blade Storm. Blade Storm definitely an improvement over Coerce with the uh, opponent's oh. deck in mind. And oh, that's a great top deck. Ooh. Yep, um, so this... <laughs> yeah, that's... I, I think looking at the opening hand for Nine Eyebrows, pre-Skipper, I probably would have put this as maybe like a 55-60% to 60 chance that Inzi wins, and I would flip that yeah. at the very least at this point. He does He does need a little bit more to help him, though. Um, I know he does, has double Armorsmith, and so he'll get uh, 8 mana on turn... Or not, uh, 8 armor on turn 5 at the earliest. So, he still needs a little bit to help him through. Inzi, however, picks up that deadly poison, and with cutting class in hand, that means that is going to be playable next turn. Yeah, I mean, yeah, with deadly poison, swing, cutting class, costs nothing. Let's figure out what else we're doing with this turn. Oh, it is Bomb Warrior. Okay, okay, so it's the Skipper Bomb Warrior. Uh, I was going to say, you might want to attack first, then play the cutting class for free. I mean, it probably doesn't change too much. Probably, yeah, just going to eviscerate face. Ooh, and there's the Steel Dancer. Well, if he had picked up a 2-drop instead, maybe the uh, nah. the Delinquent, he might have preferred to play that to the Eviscerate. You got to play around getting the second Deadly Poison. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Wrench, the only play there for Nine Eyebrows. He's going to to hold on to the 
combo armor game cards. As there's really yep. nothing on board uh, to hit yet. Steel Dancer, six drop. No, oh, six drop. What do we get? Okay, five five. That's, that's a that's a that's a low roll. Because you know, on average, you're thinking six mana. You want a six six on average on stats, but uh, five 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 is a little bit of a low roll, but it could have been worse. So it's a small victory, but also sadness at the same time. Now, at this point here for Nine Eyebrows, how much do you want to invest in a potential armor gain turn? He does have that shield slam. So, clearing two things off here would require what now? quite a few cards. Yeah. I mean, we could just punch one of them with our weapon, but that's just... It's pretty dangerous. Some extra damage, yeah. Sword. We do go back up to 15, though, with the armor. If I'm Enzi here, I might just rip that secret passage. Mm, not what's anymore. The, what's the chances of getting... Uh, uh, 9 damage with already one Eviscerate gone and one Deadly Poison gone? Well, I don't think it'd be getting the damage. It would have been getting things that you want to play, but instead he picked up the Delinquent which yeah. allows him to have that two-drop option and Greyheart Sage to follow it up next turn instead. So it was just more of a, my hand is kind of kind of weak this turn, and the other option is to just hit you and re-equip and pass, which, uh, you know, in the Warrior's case, you, don't, you never want to let them get out of hand with armor. So you want to keep pushing the aggression in some capacity pretty much every turn. Yeah, and... Uh... This should be the armor smith turn here from nine. I would believe. He's thinking about cutting class as well. Ooh, okay. So we're just second skipper. Yeah. That gives a little bit more flexibility, plus the shield block now. I'm gonna gain 2, go up to 11. So 10 damage is what we're looking for from the side. It's easy to end the game right now. One bomb actually helps the Seeker Passage draw, and there's a Vulparatoxin Blade. A mm -hmm. I up. Uh, uh, Here it goes, oh no. Seeker Passage. I only have two mana. Delinquent, Spy Mistress, Worgen, Secret Passage. So two minions to board would be a uh, pretty pretty bad idea here considering the Risky Skipper's already out. Risky Skipper. Yeah. Probably just play the Death Rattle one. Yeah. Set up for a Greyheart's Agent in hand when the Secret Passage goes away. Maybe there's an idea to play both the one drops though to take cards out of our deck. So that way it's more gas coming up. Like play double one drop so that way we have more chances to hit our burn. Was it also uh, I think an option? Yeah, I mean that's tiny tiny edge but it it could be enough to get there and like we said the warrior the longer the game goes on the more the warrior starts to gain that health back and get out of that range, uh, especially since Inzi's already played the second weapon here. Uh, there's going to be a lot of limited face what damage coming now? from his own face, uh, and those minions yep. are going to be hard-pressed to stick at any uh, at any length for the rest of this game. See how Nine wants to respawn. There's a, there's a good amount of options that you can do here. That Corsair Cash, though, to mention in hand, is a dead card. Because we, uh, with the Ankar pickup, yeah. <laughs> always happens. You always find the second Corsair's Cash, and then you find your last weapon at the same time, and you're like, oh, nice! 
Inzi has three bombs in the deck at this point. Dodges all of them this turn. But we're gonna draw okay, two cards. Gonna pick up. Oh nope, there's oh Ooh. no. He's getting two bombs right now. Down the nine. Oh down to four. I don't think he has a, he has a he's choice. Dead. Yeah, he's dead. Um, he's just dead. Because he can't clear both these minions, and that's all nine that's needs, it. is that one extra damage. I give up. So nine's going to go up two to one here. Wild Ace is one game away from taking the first match of this finals. And uh, Enzi's down to the Priest. So uh, I don't know if y'all know what the Bomb Warrior versus Priest matchup's like, but it is a long one. A <laughs> long one. <laughs> but uh, usually the longer that game goes on, the better it is for the priest. So. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. It also kind of depends on what priest, too. I mean, if it's a Highlander priest, then it's uh, it's bad for, for That's obvious fair. reasons with the bomb yeah. being put into your deck. What? Are you telling me the bombs stop my Highlander cards? The bombs do not help your Highlander cards. They do not. All right, so it's not well, Highlander. It's not Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is looking like that, just that typical control priest uh, list that everyone's been running for weeks now. We see Inzi quickly get rid of everything in hand. Uh, Nine Abra yeah. is probably going to keep that Sky Raider, I'd imagine, and probably toss everything else. an idea to keep an upgrade but it's like it's the chances of you doing that is a uh, like is a high roll and but i do like keeping the galakron yeah actually you know the more i think about is, the galakron a slow matchup is a pretty good keep well this is this is the matchup that brought galakron back into Someone's these lists lead the charge. was just this extra three damage a turn that the uh war because like before this matchup was just like all right, well, I'm out of face damage, and I played all my minions, so I hope you somehow draw bombs and don't heal past the bomb range right. at all, Priest. You know, so this this Calicron is, is huge to have in the opener here for nine. That being said, too, I mean, it's a card you'd obviously prefer just to draw as you get closer to the point where you can play it. However, uh, yeah. this does mean that you don't have to worry about digging around for it, hoping to show up at some point. You've got it when you need it. Uh, speaking of getting when you need it, Nine Eyebrows has Ankar with the coin there to get rid of the Sethic Veil Weaver, which can cause all sorts of problems if it's left alive. And this is just, uh, I think, just a pass. Just a pass, probably. Frenzy, I mean, just no reason to use the, the Renew at this point. No. you. There's nothing threatening you. You don't know, like, if it offers you something over the other, you don't know what you... Really need? I guess you can take like right. You take like an educated, like you know the list. Like you, you're pretty close to knowing the thirty for like the whole thirty. Did he just heal his opponent? He did. Maybe to shut off battle rage. Battle rage. I guess. Yeah. Sometimes it runs a one of battle rage, but I don't. I guess that's worth it. I mean, the priest isn't doing uh, a ton of face damage, right? So, you know, um, until like later in the stages when they start playing their. Big fools that they randomly generate or randomly discover. So it's not it's not a bad idea for Minzy. Apotheosis picked up here. Nothing to really again, nothing really to play. You can just throw the cabal yeah. down, but that's pretty much a waste of what you'd like to do with it. it does stop four from going to your face, but it is time for this oh, renew. E the Lazul scheme's the best, yeah. Could maybe have seen a case for the reborn. Mm. Being a cheap card. Yeah. I mean, the school, the Lazul scheme, I think, has the best upside because this allows you to steal the two three, then, as well, or the four. Right. What currently is a four three. Oh, we can start with that. We could also just play Spellkin. I mean, yeah, at this point, the Cleric of Skills would be active if you played the Spellkin. He's going to use it anyway. But the Spellkin, mm -hmm. I kind of preferred that, to be honest. Yeah. Just because I, I like getting that into the death pool with uh, potential raised dead, which he just sure. took off the Cleric anyway. 
Trying All to right. roll the two three. What are we stealing? Gets it. Ooh, we got it. Ooh. Ah. Uh. <laughs> you always high rolling. Do you always? Not so always. Convinced. That's always. Night Abras pumps the weapon up and starts the bomb generation. Dread Corsair in hand. Generate off the Sky Raider. Not a bad little generate. Uh, he'll go ahead and pop that down and leave everything else up. Just going to get as much face damage as possible. Raise dead. Brings back the Acolyte. We're going to steal the 1-2. I think, I think he's thinking let's use the Raise dead now while the pool is thin and I can almost guarantee yeah. I'm going to get out of it. Yeah, no, you guaranteed the, the Acolyte and Veil Weaver right. off that, so. Start with the shield block. What are we drawing? Another armor smith. Another okay. armor smith. I mean, Nine feels like he's in pretty comfortable position right now. 35 health. Putting bombs in the deck at a decent clip. Got the Horde Pillager in hand, too, to keep this weapon uh, coming back and adding more bombs, which is nice as well, because you're going to need as many bombs as you can get over the course of this match. Well, maybe. It's a 50-50 for it. Oh, that's right. Because of the Ankar earlier. Was played. Yes, I'm, I'm yeah. crossing up the uh, the games here. Bell Weaver, Bell Weaver, Apotheosis? Yep, Okay. Shout out to Wild Nine opening that you, Sarah. <laughs> wow. Dubber Whisper of Evil. <laughs> Faceless. Ooh, Spell Lackey. Yeah, Spell okay. Lackey's not bad. Yeah. Actually, neither one of those is that bad, in all honesty. Faceless helps the yeah. reload pressure, and uh, obviously, spells just arguably, arguably. Lackeys uh, in general here are also kind of like events. a blade storm protection. Yeah, you can hide that as well. Taunt. Yeah. My no, uh, Brawl. It's going to be okay. played for nine eyebrows. What will win? 50-50 is the Sethix. And it does save I mean, the Sethix, but it's dying. Whatever, whatever limp was, was going to die. <laughs> yeah, but you were you were hoping for the 1-2, uh, the so that way you could not have to... More damage. I mean, not the not the yeah. one damage will likely make a huge difference in the course of the game here. Oh. Uh, another cleric pick up. Oh, draw the bomb. <laughs> bomb. Bomb is a bomb, bomb. Is a power play. Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling draconic studies or wave of apathy will be picked. It's a wave. Oh, he took the wave over the track. Oh. Interesting. Ooh, uh, plague of death. A simple spell. I'm just going to be good. Yep. I mean, might as well. You've seen one brawl already. Oh, there's Deathwing. Deathwing takes eight, so it's a 12 4. Takes nine, but yeah, it would be a 12 3. What? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you, you <laughs> right. you right. you right. We're just going to ignore that part. Uh, someone don't, don't clip that. Don't click that at home. You, but <laughs> you know what? It's going to be tough to ignore, though, if he does that. Uh, a Cabal Accolade stealing it with the Wave of Apathy. Instead, I 50-50! The the hit the wrench the caliber. Risky. So you hit the right weapon. Leaving the 3-3. Three -three, I'm always concerned with leaving minions up just because of uh, Apotheosis being card. You've seen one. And yeah, you see, uh, yeah, but you it's a reasonable know that risk. He's generated one. multiple spells, you know, a couple one one cost spells that you know it can't be, but renew into apotheosis is always a thing because priest is your a scam class. Is Let's be mind. honest. Yeah, here. yeah, one hundred percent. Oh, shield slam! Puppet, there were two great cards for him to get off that <laughs> that mind vision. We are friends now. All right. What's in the bright wing box? Ooh. Ooh. That's not bad. Uh, it's not... I mean, it's not good. But it's not bad. You know? Yeah. I mean, you'd like a game changer, but... That's a minion that could fit into a curve. 
you know, uh, yeah. fit alongside some other stuff. So that should that should be playable here. Yeah, and you know, if you Bomb Warrior doesn't play that many minions, right? So there's a chance yeah. that it's just dead bananas in hand. And you got the wave of apathy. You got the plague of death. You've got options to go ahead and clear off whatever uh, the bananas could could buff up. Got one coming down. Clear off this board. So we're getting and, uh, three armor here. Actively oh, this shield activates the shield slam. <laughs> it's not enough to kill it, though. It oh, is we not. got Veil Weaver, though. And the shield slam. Yeah, why not? Ooh, oh, silent. Okay. Okay. And inner fire down to a 1 1. Ooh, mind oh, control. There goes the chain there. I don't know. Just push one. There we go. Lose a little scheme. Not that good. Alright, so these bananas will get thrown on this death wing, most likely. And clear. Astonishing. We're gonna hit Lord Barov. That is my experience with Galakrond. In this yeah. Deck, is Lord Barov is a is an absolute homing missile for that card. Oh, just a giant wrist. Sure. Skipper. Okay. That works. I mean, it's better than Lord Barrel. Uh, by leaps and bounds. Yeah. And should be should be noted six bombs in the deck at this point. Six out of twenty-one cards. So we're at just under a third of a chance to draw a bomb. And well, there's bomb. But there is an apotheosis as well. Which will help out tremendously right now. Yeah, but I think we're gonna Murazon. Don't we just Murazon? I don't. I don't think you can. I mean, there's so many bombs. If if there's another wrench caliber hand, which we know there is, you could just be dead to one bomb. Yeah, but like, you can be Galakron. Why not? Is that is that what what Priest does best? Steal your opponent's Galakrons? But is healing more important to you than the damage at this point? Because I don't think that you're going to win in a race against the warrior, even if you become Galakrond yourself. <laughs> so I think healing continues to be the most important thing for Inzi at the moment. So it is a tantalizing uh, prospect for you, and I, I do admit <laughs> that I would love to see just for the entertainment factor, but I don't think that it's the right play. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Can't, can't be making plays like that in the finals. And unfortunately, that pumped up skipper turns uh, turns into mush anyway when Lord Baron hits the field. So uh, it was kind of not. It was almost the second worst outcome to drawing Barov and having him get pumped up. Eey. Double bomb ritual. I'll tell you what. We're gonna use one, but it's really, really not that good. <laughs> this dragon is gonna be coming back. Yeah. Woo. I have my dragon back. Yay. <laughs> Let's see. We push another six. I think we still just play Dr. Boom here. Mm, maybe not. Well, here's a thought. Go on. You I can, like thoughts. You can play the boom. Yes. And sure. then you can banana the one, the, the O1 and just shatter all the bombs right away. True. That looks to be the play. That, that does appear to be happening. All right, takes out the minion. Yeah, and the reborn bomb. happens at the end. Oh, that's oh, game. That's a lot of bombs. That's game. Yes. <laughs> what a play and series that ends it. Wow. Went for it all, you know. Uh, maybe, maybe knew the interaction. You know, he, the ritual doesn't come back until oh, after all the bombs do. So, yeah, I definitely knew that was the case as well. I mean, you need to still have enough bomb damage to get you there, though. Yeah, and it's still it's a risk. It's a risk for sure. Um, so but... he was at seventeen, and four bombs went face. Yes, and he went down to five. So on a those four three bombs, bombs in an average three, of three. Per, yeah, three damage per bomb on average. That oh is, my god.
that is a, a bit of a high roll, a little bit. Just just a small bit. I mean, just just a just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a touch. Just a Whew. Touch. I mean, an exhilarating end to the to the first series of the Hero Finals. <laughs> yeah. And we're looking at a four one lead now uh, for Wild. Uh, yeah, four one lead for Wild Aces with the bonus point that you get for winning the series. So, jeez. Man. Yeah. Um, uh, wow. Yeah. So, congrats to Nine Eyebrows and the Wild Aces taking this uh, this early lead that we were discussing before the uh, before the show started. So, yeah, big big start. Like you said, uh, you know, getting the first win in the series takes a little bit of the pressure off your team. I mean, you still got to close it out, but it gives you a little bit of room for error. And uh, we're going to see a couple more matches as uh, as the week goes on, too, which is great. So uh, as far as I know, we have one match that's looking to be streamed tomorrow afternoon or evening, mm -hmm. I guess, like closer to 6.30 p.m. So we'll see if we can put a stream team together for that one. Uh, and then uh, I know Twos and uh, Always Just In Time are going to be playing on stream. I think it's on Friday. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I can double check that for you real quick and for those viewers at home. And as far as the remaining matches, I have not been told when they will be yet, but we will make sure to try and get those on stream oh, for you. There's two on Friday. Two. All right. At 8 p.m. Eastern, we have twos versus always just in time. Yep. New then at now. 9 p.m. Eastern, we have turtle versus C-Mac on Friday as okay. well. Okay. So we do have a couple going on. And yep. I think there's a third match that night, too, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. I mean, but I mean, that one's just going to be a stomp and it's not as exciting as your finals. Yeah. So. Well, we'll ignore the third match. We'll talk about it on uh, on Heart Center later uh, this evening. But for now, we'll, we'll just focus on the, the Hero Finals matches. Well, yes. But well, speaking of that, Heart <laughs> Center is coming up right now. Thankfully, uh, we are, you know, a little bit a little bit past our start time, but we figured that would be the case with the match here tonight. We wanted to make room uh, to to bring yep. this fantastic match to you, which it ended up being very entertaining. So I do appreciate that. Um, as far as the stream is concerned. Uh, we'll be right back because we're just going to turn this thing off. Ten minutes is going to go by, and then we'll be right back with we'll you right in just back. a few seconds. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to go take a little break ski because we got to wait this delay out. So we're going to go uh, rouse Mako and Lotus Knight and get them. They're already in here. Well, in the voice call. They're already in the voice call. What? They joined the voice hey. call? Yeah. Oh, hey, Lotus joined the voice call. <laughs> <laughs> and Mako joined the voice Fine. call. All right. Well, yeah. thanks, so guys. <laughs> And uh, we will be we'll be swapping right over. Thanks for joining uh, tonight to watch the first Hero Series match, and we will see you in a few seconds. See you soon. Or a few minutes, you know. Well, you know. 